Hey again, we've got another video here demonstrating bone conduction masking. I've designed this audiogram here that just has slightly worse hearing in the right ear compared to the left ear. We're going to use this as our example for bone conduction masking. Since air conduction thresholds aren't far enough apart to require air conduction masking, but the bone conduction thresholds are just different enough in some places that it might be required. Please note that in this video we're going to be using theta defaults for bone conduction for interaural attenuation and the occlusion effect. Interaural attenuation we assume to be 0 dB and the occlusion effect values we'll use are 10 dB at 1000 and 20 dB at 500 and 250. I'm going to zoom into this case so you can th see everything a little bit more clearly on your screen. So the first thing we need to do is figure out when we need to mask. If you have more questions about knowing when to mask, please check out one of our other videos that highlights that. But in short, you need to mask whenever there's an air bone gap greater than 10 dB. Or you can think of it as finding a 15 dB air bone gap or more. The left ear that has better hearing has all of the bone conduction thresholds within 5 dB of the air conduction thresholds. So we don't need to mask anything by bone conduction in the left ear. But let's take a look over at the right ear. At 250 Hz, our bone conduction threshold is at 10, and our air conduction threshold is at 25. That's a 15 dB air bone gap, so we're going to need to mask for bone conduction at 250 Hz. If we look at 500, the air bone gap is only 5 dB, so we won't need to mask in that case. 10 is a borderline case. A threshold at 10 dB by bone conduction and an air conduction threshold at 20 is a 10 dB gap. You probably don't need to mask here, but you could if you wanted to be sure. 2000 has a large air bone gap of 20 dB, so we definitely need to mask there. We have another 15 dB air bone gap at 3K and a 10 dB air bone gap that we don't need to mask at 4K. In summary, we're going to need to mask for bone conduction at 250, 2000, and 3000 Hz, giving us three masked bone conduction scores. So let's look at 250. When we presented a sound through the bone oscillator at 250 Hz, we got our threshold down at 10. But when we presented it through headphones at air conduction, we got our threshold at 25. Is it more likely that sound is being blocked by air conduction causing this problem? Or is it possible that this bone conduction sound was actually a response from the better hearing left ear? If you'll notice, the left ear threshold was also 10 dB. So it's possible that when we played this sound in the right ear through bone conduction, it was actually stimulating the better hearing ear and the patient responded, not because they heard it in the right ear, but because they heard it in the left ear, the non-test ear. So to make sure that that doesn't happen, we need to mask the non-test ear. Let's mask bone conduction at 250 Hertz. We'll turn on our masker at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear, plus a 10 dB safety pad, plus the occlusion effect. In this case, we're going to use 20 dB as our theta default bone conduction occlusion effect. We'll present our stimulus and see if we get a response. There's no response, which means this response used, that we used to get was coming from the left ear, but now we've got enough masking in that ear to cover it up. So we're good to raise our stimulus until we find the true threshold. So now we've presented the sound that's a little bit louder and we're going to raise our masker and then we'll raise our masker. Every time the patient responds, we raise the masker. We got three consecutive responses with raising the masker, so we're going to save this as our true mask threshold. You'll notice that the air bone gap that we once had, a 15 dB gap, has now been reduced by 10 dB and we're no longer, we would no longer say that we have a conductive component in the right ear. The next threshold we needed to mask was 2000 Hertz, so let's look there. We'll turn our masker on at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear, plus a 10 dB safety pad, and we'll add the occlusion effect. But the occlusion effect isn't significant for high frequencies, so we really only need to add the 10 dB safety pad. Remember that at 1000 and below, you'll need to add the occlusion effect, or you might not be accurately covering up the sound in the non-test ear. So we'll present our stimulus, and we're effectively masking. So we're going to raise our stimulus to get closer to the true threshold. No response. And we got a response. So the patient heard the response, but at this point we don't know if they heard the response because we're at the true threshold, or if they heard the or if they responded because we turned the signal up loud enough 
that they're able to hear the new crossed over signal that's a little bit louder. So we're going to increase the masker to try and recover up the non-test ear to make sure that our response is legitimate. So I'll raise the masker and present and there's no response. So we're going to raise the stimulus and we got a response. So we raise the masker to make sure that we're covering up any additional crossover. And this time we raise the masker and we still got a response. To make sure we're going to raise it one more time. So now we're fairly confident that we're covering up the non-test ear with an air conduction masker. We present, we get another response, so we're going to save that as our true threshold. The last frequency we need to test is 4000 Hz. We'll turn on our masker and the masking level is the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety pad plus the occlusion effect. But in this case, we're at a high frequency at 3000 Hertz and so we don't need to add in any occlusion effect. We'll present this tone and we don't get a response. So we're covering up the crossed over signal in the, in the non-test ear. So we'll raise the signal and raise it again until we get a response. Then we're going to raise the masker and we got a response. So we'll raise the masker again and we got another response. So we'll go ahead and save this as the mask threshold. And at this point we've done everything we need to. We've completed masking and we've closed all of the significant air bone gaps and we can confidently report that this is a sensory neural hearing in the, the right and the left ears. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below or send us an email if you have any questions or if you want me to do a specific case on here to show you how we can do it. Good luck and have fun using Theta.